Hi, today I'm going to go through the API ICP website and uh, uh, have a give you a tour of uh, API 571 um, corrosion and damage mechanism exam. So if you go to Google and uh, punch in API ICP, the uh, first site that comes in, that's the API website for individual certification program. And uh, if you go to certifications, there's a drop down window and then you can go to API 571 corrosion and materials and you get all the information you need for this exam. Uh, this exam can be done in person or by remote proctoring. That means uh, you can do it remotely from the comfort of your home or an office. The same rules apply as in in-person. Sometimes a bit restricted in the sense that uh, you cannot have a pen and paper. Whereas in center they give you a pen and paper and they give you a pocket calculator where obviously you don't need it. So... Uh, the calculator there would be an icon also on your computer screen and this exam is uh, 3 hours 15 minutes 110 question 100 are scored remaining 10 are pre-test question and are not scored the scored non-scored question are shuffled together so you don't know which one is scored or not so you have to answer all the 110 questions within 3 hours 15 minutes. It's a multi-choice and close book. Paper and reference materials not allowed into the exam. And uh, API user scaling score uh, in order to standardize the level of difficulty across all the examination sessions. Uh, but roughly you need to have 70% uh, of this uh, answered correctly. There is a before the exam there is an exam tutorial and the exam tutorial practically tells you how the icons work you can uh, use the exam tutorial for up to 10 minutes or earlier if you end the tutorial section and then automatically the exam starts it will ask you to accept the non-disclosure agreement which means you cannot uh, divulge the question that you see here and share it with others the information and then once you confirm, then uh, your uh, name comes up here and the exam has got some useful uh, headings like the progress uh, is shown on the top as well as the remaining time. And on the left column, you will see the question you're actually attempting. You can jump from one, say to 10 and or you can go uh, answer them sequentially or use the next button at any time you can start the exam so once you click the start exam uh, your exam will start and the uh, class clock keep ticking so that means any time that you use for toilet or drinking water to make a comment on a particular question is coming off your time and any time you leave the examination room you have to check in and go through the same initial security so you should take your photographic government issued id that should be in latin with a signature on it such as driving license or a passport and it should be valid so you should take it with you and when you come back they ask they do the same verification check id they've got some useful information the most works the same way as on a normal screen on your laptop uh, any question you have not attempted it, it's uh, or you have attempted it changes color here and uh, if the question is long and uh, fit within a page so it says requires a scrolling so you need to go down in order to answer the question and read all of it and answer it the remaining time is there keep a steady pace so you got 110 question 195 minutes uh, that means it's less than uh, two minutes per question. So if any question is taking more than one minute or one and a half minute, just plug it off and go to the next question and then come back at the end and look at attempt those questions because you don't want to be short of time. Once the time run out, uh, the exam automatically 
is ended, terminated. There is a flag of button. This is very, I found it very useful. Any question you're in doubt, you can flag it off and see all the flag of question that you are in doubt. Multiple question. So if you click on a question, it changes color. That means that's a question you have answered. If you change your mind, you can click it again, it unchoose it, and then you can click other possible answers. There's a calculator icon there. And once you click on this, you'll see a simple calculator in case you need any calculation, which I doubt you would need it. For highlighting the text, you can uh, keep the mouse on it and drag it and it will highlight it if you want to zoom in. Another uh, good feature is that if you go on any possible answer and right click, it will strike it off. Uh, so that's helpful when you are in doubt uh, which question is right, but then you can use your power of deduction and work the other way around, see which, which answer would be possibly uh, definitely wrong. You can strike them off and then uh, you can uh, concentrate on possible right answer and choose the best answer, the best of your knowledge. Um, at the end, you can also review the, there is a review section, you can review the all the question or review everything that are not attempted uh, or review the question that are uh, flagged off. So answer all the questions, there is no negative marking. Will you increase your chance of passing? Uh, you can also write your comments on any question, but remember that the time spent on writing any comments, it's coming off your time. You allocate a time of three hours, 15 minutes. The reason for pretest question are that this question are experimental question. So based on new revisions of the study material, API keeps on designing new question by a subject matter expert. It's checked by two subject, other subject matter experts to see that the question is clear enough. And is it something that the API 571 corrosion and material specialist should know? Uh, so once that's checked out, uh, it will be included as non-scored question. And the reason is that they want to see how difficult was question, how many people answered it correctly, or how easy was the question. And also if it has been challenged by any candidates. Um, so once it's checked the second uh, phase, it will be included to the data bank as the scored type of question. the moment, uh, beginning from December 2021, which was last year, all exam content will be based on API 571 third edition 2020. So it's very important that you study the right revision. For pre-qualification, if you have uh, API 510, 570 or 653 certificates, you are automatically qualified to attend this exam. And uh, if not, then you should have uh, one year of experience. If you are a bachelor degree in engineering, any experience in petrochemical industry, two year degree, uh, if you have it's two years, if a high school diploma holders have, should have three years experience and no formal education, five years. And the experience should have been acquired within the last 10 years. Recertification is uh, done every three years and uh, you have to pay a fees. You can do uh, apply for recertification 90 days prior to this, uh, your expiry of your certificates and up to 90 days. Uh, they call it the 90 day grace period after the expiry, subject to late application fee of $150. And every six years you have to uh, sit for a quiz. It takes it's a, some 20, 25 question and you can do it from your home remotely and uh, you can spend up to four hours and you can interrupt it up to three times and you can do two attempts. So with all this, uh, if still you don't do the quiz or you fail in quiz two, twice, then you have to do uh, all over again. So 
submit a fresh application to the full exam and pay the full fees. Let us see what are the sheets uh, for and schedules for that. So if you go to 2022, uh, you can see that uh, the last exam, I mean, the next exam is December 2nd to 23. It's a three weeks exam window. So, and you should uh, get your application approved by September 30. Uh, so uh, that is the deadline. Uh, remember that if you select, say, this window, you can only attend the exam within this window. So as soon as you receive your, uh, you register a free account with uh, API and pay the fees and provide your references for experience. And once they verify, they send you an email authorization. And once you receive the email authorization with a link to Prometric Test Center, you go to Prometric website and select the slot and date within that three weeks window. So if you want to change this window, it is as good as failing. So you have to reschedule and pay the rescheduling fee. So once you, uh, when you are selecting your exam window, three weeks window, be careful that you are committed to that window. 2023, um, the next exam is April 7, with a deadline of February 3, and uh, it's one on August to September, and the last one is again December 1 to 22. The fees are, for this exam, $365 for non-member fee, uh, and for API member fees, $315. Now, API does not give individual membership, so you should uh, uh, be working for a company who is an API member to avoid this opportunity. Uh, otherwise, most of candidates end up paying $365 for initial exam. Recertification every three years, uh, you have to pay $260 for recertification. And for if you want to reschedule the exam, if you don't uh, you don't find a slot uh, that you have selected uh, on that three weeks window uh, exam uh, or you don't show up or you fail the exam for whatever reason you want to reschedule it is $150 and late application fee for submittal of recertification is another $150 uh, so if you want to apply you click on this button apply and then you go and select the course and uh, and then you open a free account you upload your certifications your academic qualifications your experience and you provide references and then pay the fees and they will do that for you they will send you the email authorization once they have the uh, verification from your references about your experience and there are other useful information like policies, frequently asked question. Um, there is, uh, if you want to find an inspector who is qualified, uh, you can go to this directory. And uh, or you want to verify an inspector status. Um, so there are very useful information here. Uh, if you want to know more about remote testing, you can click here. And uh, there is uh, statistics that tell you how many people passed for each exam and how many people attempted. Uh, this is a difficult exam, normally around 40%, 35% of people only pass. So you need to really be good at it. Uh, and uh, this exam is held uh, uh, on the basic level. So uh, it's very important that you know the terms, definition, vocabulary and uh, anything that is repeated twice in the API 571 uh, recommended practice, you should read it twice. We have highlighted all this in our uh, course uh, and uh, our e-learning course. And uh, I can show you the, uh, have a quick tour of our e-learning course. Uh, this is $249. Um, it has, uh, four months 24 seven access with one more free renewal in case you couldn't attend the exam or you failed the exam with online support. We have uh, technical, general 
and access and IT support, you can also always write to us using this button. Uh, contact us. You can create a free account and then try our free quiz and study our first module for free. Uh, this course has uh, a complete closure atlas, 900 uh, flashcards and 1200 questions within 15 sets of uh, mock exams. Uh, the first one is free uh, module. So it's about all you need to know about API 571 certification with some exam tips and one complete mock exam package, mock exam test. Uh, on module two, we have selective corrosion atlas. On module three, we have covered all the 67 damage mechanism as you can see here. It covers all the damage mechanism, 67 of them and uh, the Annex A as well and uh, Model 4 uh, we have explained uh, again um, the publication effectively sheet highlighted all the areas that are potential exam question this includes uh, terms definition abbreviations and uh, six sets of um, uh, six lessons on damage mechanism and the 20 important damage mechanism that are brought 570 510 and 653 and then on model 5 six sets of flashcards and then on model 6 we have 15 sets of mock exam questions so that's all if you have any question please call us contact us and we shall be happy to help thank you